Okay, well, it's the weekend, Friday night, um, and we're ready to get stuck into this to wind our rotor. Now, we have to wind this in a particular way, and um, we'll cover that in the next video because um, this video is to actually make sure that what we're going to do is going to work. It all sounds good on paper and in theory, but um, before we go we're spending a lot of time there, we first make up a simple solid state circuit to make sure that um, things like the magnetic field of these two large magnets, uh, which are the same as the ones in our case we're going to use, um, are in no way going to affect anything going on within the coils as such. Uh, books and um, theories are all well and good but nothing stacks up like a um, on the bench device under test right in front of your eyes and that's what we're doing here <clears throat> okay two big magnets of course the coil with the blue wrapping around it is um, a bifilar coil one we're using is our primary two ohms of resistance across that and one of our secondary also two ohms resistance not getting into Miller Henry's and all that sort of crap, not interested. Um, <clears throat> okay, so this coil here, and this sandwich between these two very large magnets, which are out of one of those motors. This coil here was just a, another experiment I decided to carry out at the same time. That coil there has a 100 ohm resistor on it, and we're not even going to touch that side of the experiment. That's going to be for something else. Very interesting. Um, okay, so our primary coil is being fed 4 volts at the moment. Uh, switching it on and off via a transistor. And that is being switched by my signal generator at 400 hertz. 31% duty cycle. We can even knock that down to an even 30 at the moment. Uh, this meter here showing current. I have the meter between my power supply and the large smoothing cap. Reading very accurate. Uh, not going into all the crap about proving how accurate my meters are. I've done it time and time again and we're not doing it anymore. Um, just for tickle's sake, I placed the scope across that meter and could not detect any ripples, as we expect. This is showing the voltage across that cap. And it is going up and down simply because this time of night everyone's switching everything on and off and the power is not so good uh, from our mains. So that is our power input. 3.9 odd volts at 243 milliamps. The current is reading average. Alright, so uh, this is on our secondary coil and that is a little light globe we're going to use as our load. Um, at the moment that is disconnected we are only going to be loading up what you guys are calling the flyback which is actually a fly forwards. The current does not change direction. Um, so our um, flyback will be coming and going through this load. Our primary coil is um, looped. Uh, we're looping it through, going out of that diode um, and across that 100 ohm resistor which the scope is across. The common ground is also across the negative. So our power uh, input pulses are going through that resistor and then when we switch the load on, our current that we are getting from loading the secondary uh, while the primary is off um, also induces a current in the primary and that we will see the scope is now showing you without our load so you can see the current during the on time and that is our 30% on time cycle and that is our 70% off time and here you can see our uh, inductive kickback 
we should be inductive kick forwards. It's all too confusing sometimes. So okay, normal situation. Power on, switched off, fly back. Now the reason you guys are getting confused and you're seeing it going the opposite direction, that's not the current, that's the voltage. The current continues to flow through the inductor in the same direction. The voltage inverts. Okay, um, and these meters give me the royal order. All right. Input voltage, input average current. Load not connected. So now we're going to um, take this inductive kick back here, which is lighting this neon at the moment, and it can light that neon because we only have 100 ohms across our primary coil. Not enough to pull the voltage down that's lighting that neon. However, this large um, low resistive load, which is about 6 ohms, is enough to drop the voltage down. So that's what we're about to do. We're about to take our flyback and um, put a resistive load on it. So it is not open at the moment and I'm not touching that. I already have and it's a bit nasty, 110 volts. And um, that's what we're simply going to do. We're going to load up the secondary coil and what we wanted to achieve was a higher current flow through the primary. So we want our primary, instead of having this skinny little line here, to be more like this on the bottom side. So we have some sort of sawtooth um, AC waveform. Now remember that's only measuring voltage, so it's not current. So our um, current will remain flowing in the same direction through that coil and thus our magnetic field produced by that coil will be the same regardless of what the voltage is in this situation. Okay, so we're going to load the uh, inductive kickback which we're going to collect from the secondary and uh, see what happens. So here we are once again, 3.91 volts, 243 milliamps. We're going to load it. As you can see, our neon has gone out. 239 milliamps, 3.91 volts. Once again, unloaded. 243. Loaded. 239, 240. So we've dropped slightly um, in input power. But have a look at the current flowing through the primary coil now. It is loaded, it is unloaded. Loaded. So we're going from a situation where we have 168 or 160 millivolts across our 100 ohm resistor, and that is RMS, to a situation where we load the secondary and the primary now has 720 millivolts RMS flowing across that coil. So we've managed to drop our power input um, by both running a load and at the same time um, increasing the current flowing through our primary coil by a whole shitload. So um, this is working exactly how we want it to work on that, hopefully. So all we have to do is go from a solid state version over to a mechanical version and um, make that there work the same as this is working here. Um, and that is where we're going to get our extra energy from. We're still going to have 
the same transformer action happening um, but we are also going to use the effects of that transformer action um, that's going to happen around our rotor to increase the magnetic field strength on the rotor pull harder towards our stator magnets and thus giving us more torque on our motor as far as mechanical torque goes so working good here now we have to do is make it work there um, so my next video is going to be uh, the start of our um, build on this uh, motor but, uh, that has actually worked a whole lot better than I thought it would and our uh, magnets have no effect whatsoever actually the magnets actually are what pulling our uh, current board down and um, when we get onto this a little later on the solid state version I'll show you what happens on this coil when we switch this one on and off and I'll show you what happens on this coil when we load the secondary on our primary coil which should be obvious already looking at the current flowing through that coil as to what's going to happen alright guys uh, thanks for watching uh, now I'm now going to start uh, I'm going to get this video uploaded first so you can have a look and then um, we'll start the build on that and we're going to have to be really careful how we wind this because we're going to be skipping every second uh, commutator segment on there which means we're going to miss uh, we're going to call these blocks each coil takes up five blocks and we're going to miss one coil because we get uh, one block because we're missing one um, stay, uh, commutator segment and that's what we don't want so our secondaries are actually going to start from that um, block that was missed by the primary ok guys um, I'll go and get this uploaded let you have a look and, um, but uh, this was a uh, very large success indeed thanks for watching